Today I want to share with you how to make a healthy make-ahead hot chocolate mix. And this is a shelf-stable pantry staple. Hi sweet friends! I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, this is very easy to make. And what we're going to do is make a total of 20 servings, which we'll put in this quart size jar. I'm also going to show you how to package individual servings in little jars like this with some baby marshmallows that make darling little gifts. Well, the first ingredient that you're going to need is some powdered milk. This can be an instant non-fat dry milk. It can be a whole powdered milk. Whatever you have on hand will work for this recipe. Now, if you use instant non-fat dry milk, this has a very good shelf life because when you buy your powdered milk, check what the expiration date is on it. And if it's very fresh, chances are the expiration date will be about two years out from when you buy it. And the same will hold true for your uh, cocoa powder, your unsweetened cocoa powder. So this could have a shelf life of about two years. And yes, you can store this in your pantry. Now, if the dry milk powder you're using is made from whole milk, the shelf life will be shorter. It could range anywhere from six months to a year. The whole milk powder, because it's made from whole milk, still contains the fat. And so you have to always keep that in mind because fat, whenever it's even when it's dehydrated, when it's in any type of product, will always shorten the shelf life. But what you can do is when you buy your whole milk powder, just look at what the best buy date is. And that will give you some indication as to how long uh, that, or what the shelf life will be of your make ahead hot chocolate mix uh, when you pull all your ingredients together. Now what you're going to want to do is just get yourself a nice bowl and get your powdered milk right in there. And you're going to need two cups of powdered milk, but don't worry about writing this down. Uh, I'll be sure to put a link in the description underneath this video. So just open up the description and you'll see the word recipe and next to it will be a link. That'll take you over to my website where you can read the recipe online or you can print it out. So we've got the two cups of dried milk powder and then you're going to want one cup of cocoa powder. And this is just going to be a plain unsweetened cocoa powder in just one cup. Now I like to add all my ingredients into the dry milk powder through a strainer because sometimes some of them uh, can have little clumps. And this way we're assured of getting a nice uh, smooth mix. The next ingredient you're going to need is just an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And again, I'm just going to run that right through my strainer. Now I'll leave the discussion for the sugar last, but the next ingredient is optional. The, what I've gotten here is some arrowroot powder, and it's just two teaspoons of arrowroot powder. You can also use two teaspoons of cornstarch if you want, uh, but if corn products don't agree with you, arrowroot makes a great substitution. And if you don't have either of those, uh, a little bit of white rice ground up in a grinder, or if you have it already made into a flour, uh, white rice flour works very well in, in this preparation as well. And the reason that we're adding this, and again, as I said, it's optional, is because a lot of the uh, store-bought hot cocoa mixes that you might find on the shelf at your grocery store will also often include some sort of anti-caking agent so that all of this stays well mixed and there's no clumping and so on and so forth. So cornstarch, arrowroot powder, uh, uh, rice, what did I say, white rice powder or white rice flour uh, will definitely serve that process as well. Uh, if you want to leave this out completely and maybe you're in the process of doing a lot of things with your um, your prepper pantry and you're storing food away and you have those little silica gel packages that are food safe or they're covered in a food safe uh, wrapping. Uh, you could stick one of those in your jar. That'll help as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and add in some arrowroot powder. Alrighty, now let's talk about the sugar. 
A lot's going to depend where you are on your journey from moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen. If you're still using white sugar, that's fine. Now what works best in a mixture like this is if whatever sugar you're using has been ground into more of a powdered sugar. So if you have white powdered sugar and you want to use white sugar, that's what you'll be adding to this and it's going to be two cups. Now, if you just have white sugar and you want to use that and you have a little grinder like this or a blender, uh, whatever you have should be able to grind that white sugar into a powdered sugar. And the same goes for uh, if you're using a whole sugar. What I've got here is Sucanat and this is just dried, cane, dried sugar cane juice. And the name Sucanat is just where they take the first letters of a few words and put them together. Sugar, cane, natural, Sucanat. And so this is what I like to use and Sucanat works beautifully whenever you're working with chocolate because chocolate can really help uh, disguise the fact that you're using a whole, oh sorry, a whole sugar. Now, are there other options you can use? Certainly. If you want to be a little gourmet, you could use a maple sugar, uh, but you want to make sure that you do like that little bit of added flavor. Uh, you could also use coconut sugar. You could also use date sugar. So there's a lot of options you have to increase the healthiness, so to speak, of this hot chocolate mix. But I find just your regular basic Sucanat, and this is becoming more and more common. It's a lot easier to find at the grocery store. So I highly recommend using this. Now what we're going to do, this is, you know, as you see, this is just in its form where it came right out of the bag uh, when I bought it at the grocery store. And it's very, you know, it's, it's very grainy. It's got a lot of uh, graininess to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just you know, whirl it in this little grinder. I find this works very well. But if you have a blender, that'll do it too. You'll just want to take, you know, periodically stop it and just, you know, mix it up a little bit with a, um, a spatula, you know, down the sides just to make sure you get everything evenly ground. I think if you have one of those fancy high-speed blenders, it, uh, it should go very quickly and you probably wouldn't even need to, um, scrape the sides down. You probably do it in 30 seconds. And the same if you have one of those uh, like little bullet type blenders, that'll probably work really well too. But what I'm going to go ahead is I'm going to go ahead and just start grinding these, grinding this up in here until I get it into a powdered sugar form. Now I ground the Sucanat all up in my little grinder and as you'll see, it just looks like a, sort of a lightish beige colored powdered sugar. It's perfect for adding now directly into our hot chocolate mix. <laughs> a lot of it's flying up here. Now we're just going to mix all this up. And you know what I found, as I said, with the Sucanat, you know, it does have a little richer flavor than if you were just using plain white sugar, but I find it makes the hot chocolate very nice. It gives it a, a little bit of a richer flavor and it, it complements the chocolate so well that uh, I don't find that it, it has a strong flavor. But certainly uh, you could use your white sugar. Uh, you could also try half and half, or you could just uh, try maybe incorporating a, a quarter cup of the Sucanat and do the rest with white sugar. So that little by little, you can start to incorporate more whole sweeteners uh, into your cooking. And again, you know, I just want to mention about the arrowroot powder that I used. Uh, if you don't have any of those uh, things that I mentioned, the cornstarch or the arrowroot powder, or a little bit of rice flour, or even a little silica gel pack, don't worry about it. It's especially helpful uh, when you live in a, a very humid climate. Uh, if, if moisture is really not an issue where you are or in your kitchen, uh, this should be fine. And if there is any little bit of caking, it's easy to just mix it up very quickly with a fork. So if those are things that you don't have on hand, don't worry about it. it this will be fine. You'll just uh, mix it, make sure that you mix it real well. That's what's most important at this point. You don't want to see like when I uh, turn this up from the bottom, I'm seeing like a little bit of white here, uh, which is some probably residual uh, arrowroot powder. So I want to make sure that I really mix this thoroughly. 
I'm actually going to switch to a whisk so I can really get everything well mixed together. You know, and as I had mentioned, it's interesting about arrowroot flour. It's uh, very well tolerated uh, by a lot of people. So if there's various other recipes you have that call for cornstarch and you don't want to use cornstarch, you know, it's often used for thickening soups or thickening gravies or sauces. Uh, various other recipes, sometimes, you know, even you might even see it in cake and cookie mixes. You can often substitute arrowroot flour, which is great. You know, as I said, if any, if corn products just don't agree with you or cause inflammation in your body. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'm just going to continue to give this a nice whisk to make sure I don't see any more uh, light colored spots. And then we'll get ready to jar this up and I'll show you what I like to do with the baby marshmallows in here. To have, and I'll show you how to put a little piece of parchment paper in there to keep them separate from the hot cocoa mix. Now I'm going to put this entire mix into a quart size jar. I'm going to use a funnel just to make things easier for me. And this is going to hold 20 servings. And I'll show you how we're going to reconstitute this and turn it into a nice cup of hot chocolate. Uh, but you, this makes a wonderful gift. And, and as I said, this is 20 servings that you'll have in this jar. And after we get this filled, I'll just take out a little bit and I'll show you what I like to do with the little jars. But you could have this jar filled uh, to, the, to the rim with hot cocoa mix and then you could tie a nice ribbon on this and you could also get another jar next to it. You could have just regular uh, little baby marshmallows or you could even dehydrate them, uh, which is what I like to do uh, when I put them in the little jars. But e either way, this is just a wonderful mix to have on hand. It's homemade and you don't have to uh, worry about having any extra added chemicals from uh, ones that you might buy at the store. Uh, and now what you do is, as you're filling this, you just give this a little shake. It helps compress it and so that you can fit all of it in here. Well, I think I got all that in there that is really filled to the rim. <laughs> And now I've just got my canning lid, what came with this jar, but you can use any lid that you have. I'm just going to put this canning lid ring on and there we go. 20 servings of a Make Ahead hot chocolate mix. Now if you want, you can also use these plastic storage lids that they also make uh, for jars or you can use any jar that you have. I just happen to have a lot of canning jars, but use whatever you have. And now I'll show you how we're going to reconstitute this to make a nice cup of hot cocoa. Now to make a cup of hot chocolate or hot cocoa, whichever you call it, you're just going to need a quarter of a cup of your Make Ahead hot chocolate mix. Now I'm just using a spoon to spoon this in here since my jar is so full. Uh, but as you decrease the amount in here, it's a lot easier to just go in with a scoop and get out your quarter of a cup. Alrighty, well that's about a quarter of a cup of our mix. And I'm going to go ahead and just put this right into my cup. Now in a minute we're going to add 8 ounces of hot liquid to that. We'll talk about that in a minute and what our options are uh, in terms of the liquid. But I want to show you how I fill this jar to make little individual portions. And I just think this is so cute. But again, we're just going to take our quarter cup of mix. I'm just going to spoon this into here. And once I get this up to just about a quarter of a cup, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and put it right into my jar. Then what I like to do is to add in dehydrated marshmallows because if they're dehydrated and then you go ahead and put your mix in and then pour either your hot water or your hot milk in there, the dehydrated marshmallows won't melt right away. They'll sort of float to the top and start to rehydrate and become like fresh marshmallows and it just makes the perfect hot cocoa or hot chocolate. Now what I've got over here are some dehydrated marshmallows. They're just the little baby marshmallows. This is very easy to do if you have a dehydrator. Just lay them out on one of your mesh sheets and set your dehydrator at 150 degrees and Fahrenheit and they'll probably be dehydrated in about four hours or so and they come nice and hard. Hear that? <laughs> And then you can just go ahead and plop those right down on top of your hot cocoa mix or your hot chocolate mix in this jar. And then 
whoever you give this to when they're ready to turn this in to a cup of hot chocolate, they'll just go ahead and dump the whole thing into their cup with the dehydrated marshmallows, add their hot liquid, and they're all set. If you want to use regular marshmallows that are soft and have not been dehydrated, you can certainly do that too. And you could just put them right in with the hot cocoa mix. And the only difference is when you add the hot liquid, they'll float to the top, but they may uh, begin to melt very quickly as opposed to uh, when they're dehydrated, that they take a little time to rehydrate and sort of stay as marshmallows for a little bit longer. But another thing that you can do, if you want to give these as little gifts, you can actually cut out a little piece of parchment paper. And we're going to go, go ahead and put the parchment paper on top, and then we'll put the regular marshmallows on top of that. So if the person wants, it's very easy for them just to uh, sprinkle out the marshmallows and set them aside, and then lift the piece of parchment paper and then put it into their, into their mug, uh, add their hot water, and then they have their marshmallows separate to put on the top. And what I like to do is, as I said, just take any parchment paper that you have, and I'll usually take the jar, and I'll just trace the bottom. Because if you say your jar was empty and you turned it up and traced around the top, often that the, uh, the circle of parchment paper will be too large. But if you just trace around the bottom of the jar, it's a little easier when you cut it out to get it to fit into the jar. Then once you've got your circle all traced out like that, you can just go ahead and cut your circle. And what I like to do is cut just slightly inside of my pen mark so my parchment paper has no pen mark on it. Then I'll just go ahead and take this little disc and just put it right into my jar, right on top of my hot chocolate mix. Now, once you get your little piece of parchment paper, your little round, tucked into your jar on top of your hot cocoa mix, your hot chocolate mix, then you can go ahead and take your fresh marshmallows and just fill the top with some of, or you know, put on, on top of the parchment paper, just as many as you want that you can fit in the jar. And then you can go ahead and you can use your canning lid and ring, or just one of your storage lids, whatever, whatever way you want to prepare it for a nice presentation. And then you've got your hot cocoa mix there and the marshmallows on top. And then when the person goes to make their hot cocoa, it's very easy to just take these marshmallows if they want. Like I said, you can put it all in. It's just that the uh, undehydrated or fresh marshmallows will melt up a lot quicker. Uh, but this way, see? they can just put them out and that parchment paper protects your little mix. So it's a beautiful combination of being able to get exactly the perfect cup of hot chocolate because now they can go ahead, remove the parchment paper, put their hot cocoa mix in here, give it a stir, let it mix up real well with the hot liquid, and then go ahead and put top everything with their marshmallows. But I'm gonna go ahead, since I've got these dehydrated marshmallows, I'm gonna go ahead and put this right into the jar without any of the parchment paper. Because as I said, when you add your liquid, uh, these will rehydrate and they won't melt, melt quickly. Then I'll go ahead and put this lid on or my canning lid, either or, and then we'll prepare it with a little ribbon and gift tag. Now, if you're a canner and you've got some canning labels, you could just put a little canning label right on the front that says hot cocoa mix or something like that. Uh, or you could put some fabric and tie it with ribbon. But what I like to do is really just tie it with ribbon since they're such small jars. And certainly you could uh, do like a double, a double serving if you wanted in a larger jar or something like that, or just give someone the whole jar for all 20 servings and some, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a pint sized jar filled with dehydrated marshmallows or fresh marshmallows, whatever you wanted. That would be very cute in a little basket. But because this is such a small jar, what I I'll show you what I like to do. Now I like to just take a little bit of red ribbon here. You really could use any color, but say you're doing this at Christmas time, red is nice. And then I just like to get a little gift tag. This one's a little large, uh, but it was what I had. So that's what I'm gonna use. And then I'll just thread my ribbon through my gift tag and we'll tie it around the jar. And then you just have your little homemade gift. Now. 
I know mine is not Pinterest perfect. <laughs> I'm very old fashioned and I use simple ribbons and whatnot, but you could be at very fancy with a nice little silk ribbon and a uh, cute little maybe cutout type uh, tag. Uh, but I just think these look so cute and you can even fill a basket with them and, you know, People can just take one at a time as they want to enjoy a cup of hot cocoa. And you can write your little message like I did here on your tag. And there you have this just, I think it's just such a cute little gift. Well, now let's make our hot cocoa. Now we've got a quarter cup of our hot chocolate mix right here in our mug. And we're going to add just about eight ounces of boiling water. Now, if you want to up the nutrition even more, you could add hot milk or you could even put your hot milk on the stove and put your quarter cup of hot chocolate mix into the milk on the stove and prepare it the old fashioned way. But usually because you're making this with powdered milk, you've got some nice nutrition in here. Then you want to mix this up with your spoon or a little whisk if you have it like this. I find the little whisk works great. And you just want to make sure that you get everything, that all of your mix dissolves beautifully in your hot water. Then that usually takes just about 60 seconds. And then you can go ahead and top it with marshmallows and we'll take a taste. Well, I've got my marshmallows in here and they're starting to melt. I just love hot cocoa with marshmallows in it. Well, let me, I'm gonna, it's very hot, so I'm just gonna use the spoon to take a taste, but let's see how it is. Mmm, that's delicious. And I'm telling you, you're not gonna notice that you use sucanat instead of white, uh, white sugar. And how nice, because you have all those nutrients that are still in the sucanat as opposed to those that have been stripped out of white sugar. You've got to try this. Now, if you wanna try more make-ahead mixes, like pancake mix, biscuit mix, brownie mix, cookie mix, all sorts of things, be sure to click on this video over here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.